Hi everyone, we're back with uh, intracranial pressure monitoring and this is something that most nurses do not experience because first of all not every institution allows intracranial pressure monitoring. It's only very specialized places that do and actually it is not that easy to accomplish so I'm going to try to just breeze over it very lightly and you can take the time to do the case studies. Let's take what would need a pa why would a patient need intracranial pressure monitoring? Well here's one example. We've got Melissa. She has meningitis and that is an indication. What are the symptoms of meningitis? She's got nucleogenicity, neck stiffness, she's got uh, difficulty extending her legs, di intolerance to light photophobia, here is another patient, subarachnoid hemorrhage. That's another indication for intracranial pressure monitoring. And there is a case study at DNSs.com, both of them, as well as meningitis. Explosive headache, again the same photophobia, same neck stiffness, nausea, vomiting, and two very distinct signs, Koenig sign and Brzezinski's. Take the time, DNSs.com. There is a case study on subarachnoid hemorrhage and one on meningitis. And now I try to just give you an overview of what a patient in ICU on ICP monitoring looks like. It's not an easy thing to conquer just by reading this. To walk it through is not that easy. It takes a lot of experience, a lot of learning to get there. So even if you have a patient and you don't know all the details, don't feel bad. It takes a long time. Intracranial pressure monitoring is usually done to control the amount of pressure in the brain. When a patient is brain injured, like in the case of the trauma patient in the field, or you might the subarachnoid hemorrhage, meningitis, even the stroke patient with bleeding into the brain, excessive pressure does a lot of damage to the brain. Not to speak about something called herniation where the brain may come herniating down at the base of the skull. So the goal is to decrease that pressure. So what the doctor does, he shaves the skull and puts a tube in as you can see here in the left hand corner and then it's called what is called an EVD as this patient has off to the side of the head external ventricular device with a drainage system that goes directly into a bag which is emptied every hour and then the intracranial pressure is red. The normal intracranial pressure is usually 0 to 15 but that's not paved in cement. There are other criteria like if a patient has been severely brain damaged it's, it would be very um, unrealistic to expect a normal pressure so the doctor usually works with the patient and the pressures and writes his orders to coincide. It's again very complicated and do the best you can to learn whatever you can. Now I address seizures here because patients who've had brain injuries tend to develop seizures and so you may not work in intensive care but you might have that patient who prior to that was in intensive care or may have had an accident of some kind direct injury to the head and has the potential for seizures. Here are some helpful pointers. Bed rails up at all times usually the head of bed is kept up at 30 degrees and there is information on seizures which I will uh, refer you to like if a patient should have a seizure holding the head to the side and avoiding them swallowing the tongue so I hope you've learned something from this have a great day